Hello and welcome to Brit Sci-Fi from the National Space Centre. A massive thanks to all of our guests and groups and individuals who are participating to make this a real celebration of British science fiction. Now, uh, I know that there's a lot of Doctor Who fans out there and we've got something very special now. We're joined by three amazing guests from all over the world. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Paul McGann, Daphne Ashbrook and Yi Ji So. Hello. Hello. Hello to you. Oh. Hello. I think everybody can hear. Uh, so technology is going to uh, work with us tonight, I'm sure. I hope so anyway, so everybody can see and hear. But massive thanks for joining us this evening. Um, we've had loads of questions submitted. It's been a very popular Q&A, so I'll crack on and try and get as many as I possibly can. So the first question, how long has it been since you've all seen each other? How long has COVID been? That's been a year. <laughs> Yeah. The, last, the, the, the last time we, we met was in uh, London Airport. We sat around some places. We had a dinner at the airport. It feels like five years ago. I, I can't tell you when it was the last time. I, can, I, I have no idea. I think it was I the know, it's time in time or... Yeah, the three of us were probably together. So we're talking already six, seven years. Yeah. Well, the magic yeah. of technology has brought you all back together tonight and fingers crossed it will stick with us. Um, so Craig on Facebook would like to know, how did you get your roles in the movie and were you already Doctor Who fans? Uh, so Paul, do you want to pick that up for us first? I got the role in the movie first by auditioning. Um, I was a Doctor Who fan. I was a Doctor Who fan at school as a kid. Uh, but then we all were. Where we lived at that time, there were just three television channels and Doctor Who was on all the time. So everybody watched everything. So we were all fans, um, almost by definition. Uh, when it came to it, we auditioned. I say we because also my brother auditioned famously, infamously, um, with uh, telling me. Mind you, he probably didn't know I was either, so um, why would he tell me? Uh, <laughs> but that's how you get a job. You've got to go and read for it. They send you the script, you go, you go in and read, uh, you read the casting agent. Um, and that's how it happened, in my, in my case. I mean, you come from a, a, a big acting family, so the fact that Mark went for it as well as you did, you know, I mean, there must be other jobs that you've gone for at the same time as well. <laughs> I think so, probably plenty without ever having realized. Um, there's probably times, you know, I've had to go to the audition and I'd probably walk in, he just walked out, I can see him. No, but there are four of us. Times, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, thank you. And how about you, Daphne? How did you get the role and did you know Doctor Who beforehand? I did not. I did not know. I didn't know a darn thing about Doctor Who. Uh, <laughs> I, I I was given the script and um, loved the script and I loved the part and um, I think before I, I I auditioned just like everybody and um, I think I found out that Paul was in it before I got it or just after I've gotten it and I was a big with Nell and I fan so I was thrilled. <laughs> to be able to work with Paul and um, of course I met E.G. on the set and fell in love with him and um, so yeah it was just an audition really and I remember just having a lot of fun in the room um, and I was called back a week or two later and was thrilled when they gave me the call but I didn't know about Dr. Who so they had to educate me on that. <laughs> Didn't know I can remember nights uh, in yeah. where were we? Yeah, no, Vancouver. Vancouver. It was meant to be something. Uh, and they were all nights. Three nights, two I can remember sitting in chairs with McCoy and you, trying to fill in everyone's thirty-five years now um, of talking to mythology. And you kind of loved it. I know I, you're the I, biggest. I just adored it because you guys are so funny anyway. So we just sat around yeah. like stupid at, in the middle of the night 
while everyone's putting the set together and lighting the set and doing all the work. And we just sat, sat around and laughed, laughed nonstop, as I recall. I can fun. distinctly remember you saying, asking McCoy, uh, what is this? <laughs> what the hell is this? And um, when, he, when he got over it, he told you. But it took him like a stick with three minutes to fill in the gaps. Um, it was joyous, that. That was I just, so much fun. I just love the idea. I'd love to know how you explain 35 years of Doctor Who in a bar in one night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you think of McCoy doing it. Because you know, you know, he, he, he probably also did all the actors and played all the characters. And he also, you know. Uh, and how about he, you? It was probably many pints. <laughs> uh, there may well have been alcohol consumed. <laughs> Uh, and Yiji, how about you? How did you get the role? And, and did you have to have the Doctor Who education? Uh, well, I, I was what they called a, a latchkey kid when I was younger and, and, you know, often came home from school on my own and just locked myself in front of the TV. Uh, so, you know, there was this stream of stuff happening and Doctor Who was part of that. Um, I, didn't, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the shows, to be honest. They were just there, part of my life. Um, but so I had some familiarity with Doctor Who, uh, not not a whole ton. Um, but yeah, I mean, like like the rest of us, I, I auditioned, and um, uh, <laughs> Philip Sewell mentioned that one of the one of the reasons why they went with me in the end was, as it happens, I was I was quite late to the audition, um, which is usually an egregious crime, and <laughs> they usually don't even let you in the room if you do that. Um, but I guess something about that whole event, they they thought it fit the character. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the gig. Thank you. And you got the gig. I think that's a good story. Yeah. Um, right. Steph on Facebook would like to know, Paul, I loved you in Night of the Doctor and went back to watch the movie because of it. Do you think your Doctor should have had a longer TV presence? Probably, but then it wouldn't be the same story. We wouldn't be talking about the same things. Um, I mean, for example, imagine you know the the, the film, the movie, the pilot we made um, together had gone to series. We'd we'd done five or six years, and been the Doctor and they'd all taken off in North America. You know. Life would have been different. We wouldn't be talking about tenant probably or for second time. So um, anyway, that's a long-winded answer. But yes, probably, but we've also got to be careful what you wish for. Uh, it does feel <laughs> sometimes I feel slightly fortunate. And when I think uh, aggregately I've been on screen as the doctor for probably about what two hours in twenty-five years. And mostly of course the eight doctor lives on audio on the but that's how it is, and that's how it is present. Because who knows what's going to happen next? You just diva now. <laughs> you diva now. <laughs> Thank you. The diversity there. <laughs> uh, Daphne, Jonathan on Facebook would like to know: uh, Doctor Grace Holloway was a positive role model and a break from the traditional Doctor Who girl. How would you have liked Grace to have developed uh, it, and would she have stuck with the series if the opportunity arose? And would you return? I, I would return. <laughs> That's the easy one. Um, yeah, no, sure. Oh my God, that would be hilarious and wonderful. But um, to be able to, to to do something with Doctor Who again. But um, I originally, I don't think they were expecting my character to come back. Um, but then they ended up uh, a week or so before we wrapped the show. Uh, they asked me on the set if I'd be interested in coming back. I was going so, oh, would I be interested? Hmm, let me think about that. And uh, of course, yeah, I, I was thrilled. I think that would get picked up. What? Let me check my diary. Yeah, let me, let me just. Oh, let me um, So, <laughs> yeah, right? Um, but I would have loved that because it was so much fun to do. 
uh, Paul and I, I know, would have had a heck of a good time doing some more of that. Uh, Vancouver was so much fun to be. I love Vancouver, so that would have been fun to be living up in Vancouver. Um, Canada is so great. And, um, and of course, I would have loved to experience more uh, with the character and see how she was going to develop. But uh, yeah, it was, it was lovely and I would have loved to do more. Yeah, because obviously at the end of the movie, she walks away. She makes the decision, doesn't she? Even though he is mm. the right guy, you know, wrong planet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it would have been great to see how their relationship developed. Um, and, and I must say, off screen there, Paul was nodding. <laughs> yeah, Paul was we, uh, you, that is right, we would have done had it, had it continued. Because, um, you know, we did, we had a ball in the I still laugh thinking about that, the laughs we had made. Because you know, had we gone like say five or six years, maybe we'd have got sick of each other. Maybe we'd have got each other in the end. Who knows? But at that time, we were not at all. Um, and that was the saddest bit. That was the saddest aspect of it. I think when when they said it wasn't going to go, and that that was it. That short term we had is what we had. Um, I was sad. I missed it. Mm -hmm. But we'll have some more in the future. I think the beautiful thing about Dr. Who is there's always another episode. There's always something else. There's always something to come. Um, you know, not old people yet. I mean. um, no. It's just kind of openness. We could, we could all end up in something. Who knows? Definitely. And you've, got, knows? you've definitely got the big finish side of things as well. Because, you know, the, the stories go on. The doctors go on. The characters go on. And... and People return through that, so there's always that. Yeah, they go on and they develop. You know, different themes come in, um, characters come in, and you know, self perpetuate. There's a there's a there's a great life to it. Yeah. Well, see, that's the thing. I mean, Paul's character obviously could go on in in uh, audio dramas and stuff, but Niji and I were restricted from being able to play our characters. Um, although we got to do a Doctor Who related stories, so that was fun. But as far as our characters went, we weren't really allowed to keep continue on because I guess they're owned by uh, Universal or something. So whatever. Yeah, because you, you came back as perfection and EG, you were a doctor, but you've both done um... Uh, big finish audio so you've both been part of the the narrative as it were but just not those characters which is sad um right back to the questions there's so many to get through sorry um uh yg mark on facebook would like to know your character started off as a gang member who found redemption by the end of the film and two bags of gold dust um how would you have liked your character to develop if the series had gone on you know i i this this is a fun question because like each time it, it comes up, you know, you, you've gone through a few years in your life personally, and you get to kind of make up new stuff each time, so it's kind of fun. Um, I think I think right now I'm kind of like playing around with the idea of of maybe he he's one of those characters that you know just once in a blue moon there's something that the the doctor or the companions get into and they're you know, on the streets somewhere and they just run into this guy and he happens to be able to provide a bit of information, insight into something, or maybe do a task of some kind that kind of helps out and then disappears again, you know? I think that would be fun that he's still um, on the streets maybe, but not um, not necessarily out there trying to do bad things. Um, he's, he's, a, he's a helpful you know, show up once in a while kind of guy. I don't know. It seems fun. No, he was definitely fun. Um, a question uh, to all of you. David on Facebook would like to know, other than your roles in Doctor Who, what is the favourite role you have played in your career so far? Um, so, Paul, do you want to pick that one first? Um... <laughs> <laughs> the, only, the only time that I, that I ever... Oh, they were mad enough. There was a kid a prize for acting. It was when um, 
when I was at the I was at the same school and I played a, a six year old girl in a play <laughs> like Carol Churchill from Cloud Nine. I think it was a good play. Um, and that's the most fun I think I ever had playing a role. I think it's always difficult. I think there was even money involved. You know, back in the day, they even give you a little. Yeah, I think you gave me a check for twenty five quid or something. That's why I had, you know, big prize money in those days. Yeah, and it's, that was it. I, I, I forget the characters in the name, but uh, anyway, that, that's that's my answer. That six year old girl. And guess what? And there's a postscript. One of my sons, who's, uh, who's an actor, I went about. Five, six years ago, I went to be in that same play, playing that same role. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Welcome to the Twiglet Zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get a lot of questions asking people what are their favourites, and, and it's always a difficult one because it's like asking what's your favourite child. You know, most of the time you can't do it, can you? And, and also things are different for different reasons you'll have enjoyed something for some reasons who you worked with the writing the director the character the the paycheck if there was one uh, whatever it yeah. is there's going to be different different reasons so it's a difficult I think question I think from EGF, but we're thinking back on, on on work rather than remember the role you played you, you, you tend to remember things that we've already been talking about. It's like the times you've had, that, that three weeks, that two weeks, that six weeks, that, that city you were visiting, those people you were with. Um, it's the, it's that, it's, those are the things that are most memorable. I think. They're the best things about work. The, kind of, the hoot, the station, you know, yeah, really. No. Other than those lines you had to learn, costume you had to wear, and, you know, um, and those faces you had to pull. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember the, the the lines, but I do remember the living in shared accommodation when you did theatre and education touring and yeah. things like that. Yeah, there were some of the best experiences of my life were those bits. So, yeah. Um, and like, like I said, even films or TV, you watch things you did years ago. Most actors don't watch because it's too painful. It's like googling yourself. <laughs> no, I do it. But, um, you know what I mean? But but. Uh, but, but, but if you ever do, or this, look, enough time has elapsed and you see stuff you're in, say I watch with now and I or something, then rather than, it, it's, it's hard to watch it as a story because every time you see something, you go, oh God, you, you remember that night that you did this or those people that were, like I say, it's always that. It's always about the, the experience rather than the, uh, the film itself. Like, the film yeah. Itself. <laughs> we're going to go through all of them. Um, okay, Daphne, same question to you. Can you pick a favourite or...? Um, I, I think uh, one of my favorites on film was a pilot I did called Sister. Uh, it was a it was a nice part. It was well written. Producer writer team were two of my favorite people in the world. They were just great, and uh, it was just a great script and one of those parts that comes along rare rarely. Uh, really great um, uh, struggle that this woman was going through with a, an eight-year-old child, single parent. It was before I had my daughter, so, or actually it was just after I'd had my daughter, so it was really interesting to see this little eight-year-old who did look a lot like my daughter. Um, in the end, um, my daughter was only six months old, I think, when I shot that thing, and and then I kept looking at this kid that was playing my daughter and I thought I, I bet you my daughter ends up looking like her and she she really did it's amazing but it was uh very well written and um it just felt right so that I guess would be my choice but uh, I also did a duet for one on stage I really loved doing that part so there's a there's a few out there that I really enjoyed doing Brilliant. Thank you very much. Sometimes it is the writing that, you know, you really get your teeth into a part and it's brilliant. Um, mm -hmm. Same question to you then, UG. How about you? There's there's a handful. It's it's definitely it's definitely really hard to, to pick one. I mean, if I had to if I had to call one out, I suppose I'd go with, um, you know, a, a musical theater production that I was involved in once just because musical theater is so fun. I mean, 
you know, you get to sing and dance on stage and, and, um, and it was for a, it was for a young, young audience crowd as well. It was like Jake, Jacob Tutu or something. So the, um, so the audiences were, were a blast as well. So, I mean, yeah, that's, um, but yeah, I mean, you could go on for, you could go on forever and extol the virtues of, you know, any one of many, many roles. Everything's di great for a different reason. Um, Paul, Dominic on Facebook would like to know, um, I was pleased to see you announced in, as part of Nicola Walker's new show, Annika. Uh, what was it like working with her in a non-Who context after so many years? It was just great. <laughs> it was absolutely joyous. Um, again, now and every now and again, you, I mean, we'd work together obviously on Big Finish, uh, on the radio, but yeah, when, when you do Big Finish and we make those recordings, yeah, we're all in these wooden boxes, these isolation booths, and of course we're there at lunchtime, but anyway, that's one way of working, but working on set with her, working on camera with her, uh, and she's very brilliant, but also completely open, like completely fun um, and generous, and God, I hope she's not listening to this, her ears would be burning. Um, it was just some, you know, some, sometimes you just kind of fit with another actor and it was, she's, it was great with her. I loved it. And I hope we're going to do some more, you know, if it, if it goes well, there might be some more. I, I hope so. I'd just drop everything, um, and get up there and do that. Ah, an absolute joy. She's brilliant. And she hits the ball back, as they say. Yeah, absolutely great. Yeah. Thank you. I'm and, and no monsters. No monsters, no people in strange prosthetics. Yeah. <laughs> always, always a good day on set. Um, right, I've got a question for uh, Daphne and uh, Yuji. It says, uh, Stuart on Facebook, if you could appear in a story with one other doctor, which doctor would you choose? I suppose this presupposes that you've watched the series since your movie. Daphne, have you watched the series? And is there a doctor that, other than obviously Paul returning? Is there a other than Paul. Like, other than Paul. It has to be other than Paul. <laughs> I actually... I'm to be very I, careful what you say next. What? I want you to be very careful what you say next. I want to be very careful. Um, honestly, I thought about this, and there's so many wonderful doctors to choose from, and I know that sounds like I'm just blowing smoke, but I, I really mean that. Um, but I, I, I felt like I was... Um, I would love to have worked more with Sylvester, honestly. Mm. I I just love him so much. And he, he is so much fun to be around. And I think he's just a lovely actor. I would have loved to have worked more with uh, Sylv, I think. And um, But there's so many amazing people to choose from. But uh, because he's a personal uh, uh, friend of mine, I can call, I think I can call him that fairly. But uh, I, I'd love to have experienced more work with him, I think. Yeah, poor chap. Walks out of a TARDIS, somebody shoots him. I mean, what kind of <laughs> city? Right? I mean, that was pretty quick, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, Sil's awesome. What, such a nice guy. Um, how about you, EG? Uh, yeah, I mean, along the same lines and, and you know, with the the whole idea of like loving what you have and being grateful for, for, for what you've got. I mean, I had an opportunity to work with Sylvester again on a big finish and I wouldn't give that up to the world. And, and, and you know, every time, every time we see each other at a, at a convention or some event or something like that, he's, you know, he's, I mean, I think everyone, anyone who spends any time with him um, can say, can confirm that he's a blast to be around. So I would say other than, other than Paul, of course, which there's no, no replacement for and <laughs> um, <laughs> would never, uh, would never choose it to be any other way uh but but yeah if i had to pick it would be probably sylvester um sylvester uh, as well as paul have been to the the national space center and at one point he was leaving and there was a family stood next to the cafe and he went over and he tapped the little boy on the head and grabbed a pair of spoons and just started playing the spoons for him <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. very talented the children <laughs> yeah he is brilliant. 
Um, right, uh, Daphne and Paul, uh, we've got Jack on Facebook would like to know, you both had awesome costumes, especially after the sixth and seventh Doctor's costumes. Um, did you have any say in the operating room ball gowns or Edwardian suits? Uh, did you have any say at all in them? Paul said I had a lot to say about my dress, I have to say. Um, he was very... <laughs> That's funny. Come on. I'm just... <laughs> With the joke. Um, yeah, no, the dress, the dress, all I had to say was, how am I supposed to breathe in this thing? Um, no, they built that thing for me. Uh, I, I thought it was a lot of fun to wear. I hadn't, I don't think I'd ever had to wear something quite like that before. So it was a challenge. Um, and, um, and I knew it was dramatic. So that was fun. Uh, I loved it, but I didn't really uh, have much to say in the design of it. They, they, they did that. They were the professionals. <clears throat> yeah. How about you, Paul? Any say at all? No, no. I mean, I kind of a little thing to say. Um, during the shoot, um, uh, where I kind of there's a scene in it where he he finds a scarf hanging in a locker. Um, and then just looks at it. You think he's going to grab it and take it with him, but he leaves it in the in the thing. That's because I didn't want to wear it personally. I didn't want to put it on. Um, seriously, I was sulking like a baby. Um, anyway, that's so we did that. But otherwise, no. It, it was all it was all ready. It was all there. It was all part of the you know the, the greater design. Um, I wasn't mad about it to be. Per I mean, I've said this before, so it's, it's, it shouldn't be news. Um, I'd kind of, when I'd met with Siegel, I'd sort of, you know, given that we were going to shoot a pilot and it was in North America, it was going to be a kind of departure. Um, I said, well, why don't we just kind of rip up the design book? And, you know, I had very short hair at the time. And I said, you know, this guy can be anything. I can put a leather jacket on. I've got the short hair. And Siegel said, are you crazy? No, no, you've got to, it's got to be this. You've got to be soft. It's got to be Edwardian. And, so I ended up wearing the gear and wearing this wig. Um, and then, of course, in 2005, Chris Eck turns up in a leather jacket and short hair. <laughs> and um, steals my, just stole my life, stole my career, stole my show. <laughs> anyway, if I ever get to work with another doctor, it's going to be him. It's going to be Chris Eck. And we can sort of out norm and he's going to be open with a rough leather jacket and talk Northern. I, I need to, that needs to happen. I mean, somebody talk to Chris. I know he's not. I'd, I'd watch it. I'd watch it. We'd have a north off. Me and Chris. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's face it. The Five Ish Doctors reboot, that this must yeah. be the next chapter. <laughs> if Chris had come back at all to Doctor Who. The north off. I mean, yeah, I've been giving you the time. There is the north off. If anybody yeah. knows Mr. Eccleston, please make that happen. <laughs> yeah. It is people to talk to about Fantastic. Thank you very much for that one. Um, I've even forgotten where we were, so I'm just going to grab a question. <laughs> I've got another question for Paul, actually. Helen on Twitter would like to know, I've just introduced my son to Withnell and I. He loves it as much as I do. Why do you think it is cult status and people all around the world can quote it? P.S. I've told him he's not allowed to shout at people out of car windows anymore. The answer is because people do keep introducing it to their kids. That's the reason which has only just occurred to me. That's obviously the reason. Um, I don't know, I guess, um, I suppose, that, I mean, it's what is it, 30 odd years now, but it seems that every cohort, every year, every generation that's found it, um, there's probably, sh there's, there's probably a few things that they share, you know, they probably, you know, you get to a certain age, you, you may have lived in that hovel, you may have met that mad genius, um, waster, you may have lived with him, you know, like the boy does in the house. Um, you know, you've all, you've had your sort of, I mean, not all the kids necessarily, but you know, you've had your sort of rough times, your fun times, your drug times. Say, so there's kind of association with it, and it's a kind of. I know now I, I, here where I'm living in Bristol, um, you know, it's a university town, and uh, come October, you can almost set your watch by it, like the freshest thing happened, new student intake arrives. And they all watch with now and I, and you can tell because I, you know, I'm walking down the street one day and nothing, and then the next day it's like 
actually hollering at me. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, someone choked and uh, someone put in chalk on the pavement outside my house here. Perfume Ponce. Um, <laughs> with an arrow pointing to my front door. <laughs> so I'm guilty. I, that's it. I can't go anywhere. Oh, brilliant. I love that idea. Right, we're all going to be walking around looking for a chalk mark on the road now. Yeah, you can probably see it from Google Earth, you know, on my ass. Yeah. <laughs> Paul lives here. <laughs> Perfume Ponds lives here. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it is one of those things that you just, when you're at university, you quote with Nan and I. Sorry, I've done it. We've Yeah, we've been there. Um, so back to Doctor Who. Uh Yiji, Kelly on Facebook would like to know, what do you think Chang did with the gold dust? Because, you know, he's a redeemed character now and he's just got to get away for a year. Yeah. Well, it, in an entirely different sort of musing about what Chang Lee might have done after the, after the movie or whatever, I, 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 my life now involves a lot of technology. I, I work in technology and I, I love it. And I, I have to imagine him having done something similar. So there's been a couple of, you know, we I had sort of a bit of banter with a few folks writing fan fiction and stuff like that. And well, maybe he takes that and he starts like, you know, in, investing in technology or like start doing something in that realm. So, I mean, yeah, there's, um, there's a lot of fun ideas you can, you can come up with when you've got a couple bags of gold in your whole life ahead of you. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a, you're a millionaire tech startup. That's what it is. And, and you've made That's it right. big. You got millions. You're a billionaire now. I think that that works. Yeah. Yeah, I made PayPal and now I'm doing Spaceship. <laughs> okay, you mentioned fan fiction. Have anybody else read fan fiction about them, their character? No. I read snippets of it when we used to do the shows and that before COVID. Um, you know, people sometimes hand you stuff. Uh, you know, you're in these business. And I always read it. Um, I don't want any here. No, in the wrong room. Um, yeah, you know, I even keep some of it because you know, sometimes you know, people give you stuff, so you you, know, you put it in your suitcase and take it home. Um, some of it's really actually really good. Um, some of it isn't, but some of it's actually really imaginative. Um, and what's always horribly erotic in it, which, which I kind of like, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, that's what I was day. alluding to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't want to be a hero from time to time. Like Daphne, I take it you haven't read any. I haven't. I I I think I actually was shown um a book that had a, the character that I played in in Deep Space Nine, um where the character of Melora. I I think there's a whole life going on there outside of that one episode. Um, and I've seen and heard mostly told to me uh, about the uh the stuff that uh for doctor who but honestly i don't think i've ever read any of it so i have nothing nothing um wonderful to add sorry <laughs> <laughs> i'm I just sure wonderful i just love the idea that some of the ones that paul's got lying around he does a jack and ori one afternoon and just sits there and reads them <laughs> Yeah, yeah. What am I up I to? Dedicate, I could dedicate a room in the house to it. That's what that's what clever people do, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Don't 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 Google it. Some of it's really not safe for work. Um. So, so just be careful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving back to the questions from the real people. Uh, Anthony on Facebook would like to know if any of you could play a monster or a villain on the show. Is there anybody you would particularly want to be, either a monster or a villain? Anybody fancy that? I want to be one of those weeping angels. Uh, that's what I was going to say. Sorry to steal your thunder, but I think we're all going to say the same thing. It's, <laughs> it's, I mean, latterly, it's the most perfect monster, isn't it? That is the best idea for a villain. It's, it's one of the simplest. You know, don't blink. Um, and what's that, uh, what, you know, what's that woman? Oh, what's her name? The, the actress who, because sometimes we do the shows with her. She's forgotten her name. I'm always slightly envious, you know, that that's her... That's her job and not mine. I want that job. I want to be the, I want to be the weeping angel woman. Anyway. It's cool. So scary. 
The last time you were at the Space Centre, Paul, there was a chap who's uh, built a weeping angel replica that's a remote control. So it, it literally is this fabulous statue. And then all of a sudden he just people go up and they stand in front of it. And it's behind them having a photograph done. And then it just comes at them. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, like I said, it has that kind of child like. It's like that's that's, that's old fashioned you know, going back 50 years. That sort of child, like, you know, afraid of the dark, behind the sofa, don't blink. You know, these are the simplest kind of. You well, know. they're in cemeteries, man. You know, I, yeah. I actually really love, strangely, cemeteries. I just, I love them. I always want to walk through them and, and read the headstones, but those You're scary my little things. Man, if they moved in there, <laughs> no, thank you. That's all right. Do you fancy being a monster or a villain then at all, Daphne? Yeah, no, he did steal what I was going to oh. we, the weeping, yeah, weeping angels. The whole, those, all those episodes, the don't blink thing. Oh, yeah. had me. I was freaking out. It was great. <laughs> yeah. And and how about you, Yuji? Any of the particular monsters you'd like to be? Well, I, if I have to pick something other than Weeping Angels, um, you know, I, I, there was a, a big finish where I, I got a chance to do a Cyberman type thing, and that was fun. Um, so I would do it again. That that would be great. Um, I also have always felt a bit jealous of, of Eric's opportunity to play the Master. I thought it would be fun to try that out. But yeah, anyway. That's well, another good one. Yeah. Um, well, talking of the master, the next question is for Paul. Uh, so uh, the fight scenes with Eric Roberts look pretty convincing. Did you ever hurt each other during filming? Uh, probably. Only emotionally. Yeah. <laughs> I've still got the scars. Uh, no, I mean, to be honest, the, the, uh, any sort of fight sequences, stunt work, any of that, it's so well run and managed um that's not to say actors don't get hurt doing the fights i don't recall we did but th there were probably moments when we could have done um because uh, you know we were both then at least um pretty kind of energetic um and i really wanted to smack eric for some reason <laughs> <laughs> so uh, anyway, just you know, as a civilian, not as a doctor, um, at the time we've got over it now. But um, but no, no, we, we escaped unscathed. Uh, but that's because there were professional people from London and that who were there to uh, to make sure we sort of kept our distance. No, you don't really get it. Um, Thank you for that. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> You don't really get it. It's all pretend. <laughs> Sing color, they it's not. They're, really, they're, they're not really fighting. It's all real. It's in color, man. It's all real. Uh, right. You make the snack sounds afterwards and all of that kind of thing. Am I really? <laughs> Biff, kapow. Yeah. Yeah. Kapow, yeah. Stop. A punk. Yeah, there's some other words as well that were used in the early comics that we're not going to say. Um, so we've got more questions. Uh, Chewy on Facebook would like to know, Yiji, you're an actor and a recording artist. Which gives you the most enjoyment? Oh, that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Well, I mean, this year it has been not necessarily very convenient to go on set um, or, or safe or whatever. So, um, and I haven't been doing that. Um, but But you can these days... Uh, record from home and you can actually collaborate with music with session musicians with real real musicians which i don't consider myself as one uh, but but you know if i you know if i if i write a song and i i send it over to some session musicians online you know you can produce a nice sounding thing um i, I haven't even released any of the stuff that i've done with the session musicians but i will and they're they sound great so um it's very it's very rewarding yeah uh music's been a big part of our family and and um yeah, tough to say. I, do I have to pick one? <laughs> Can I just have that no. on? <laughs> no, this is what I say. A lot of the questions that get submitted are always about you, you choosing your favorites of anything. And I think it's always the most <laughs> difficult question to ask. I think it's know. like it's like Spider-Man having to pick between the girlfriend and the bus full of kids. You know, it's like I want both. <laughs> <laughs> He'd pick the bus full of kids any day of the week. He's Spider-Man. <laughs> 
think I think he got both. Bro. I think he got both. That's what it is. It's all gone quiet. I know. I know what you said. Wow, this, this tumbleweed blowing through the vortex. Oh. Yeah, we lost you in, in the vortex. Sorry about that one. Um, no. So, Alexander on Instagram would like to know, all of you, have you kept any mementos from the film? I don't know if you're allowed to tell people about that one. Um, and, Paul, have you now got a sonic screwdriver? The first part, uh, keeping mementos, I don't know that we could have, even had we wanted to steal anything or just quietly pocket anything from when we were in Vancouver, it wouldn't have happened. They were absolutely on it. Um, I think I might have tried to, you know, because one always has to steal something, a bit of clothing, whatever it is um, from everything you work on. But, they, but because it was a pilot and because, you know, notionally anyway, we we're going to come back in the, in the autumn and um, make the series, they boxed everything, kept everything. And so, no, we didn't get any... I'm, Talking to my colleagues here, I don't think unless you unless you stole something, Daphne. Um, but I certainly didn't. And what was the second part of the question? Have you got um, what was the second part of the question? Have I got mementos? You got your own it? sonic screwdriver now, because obviously in the movie you did. I've got a few. Again, I'm sitting in the wrong room. There's even one I've got which sits in because um, people give them to you. Uh, I've got one that sits in a beautiful in its own holder when i was in i'm gonna this, this is a um, this is a bit of a brag now but when years ago when i was in uh, wellington in new zealand i was invited because you have to be invited to visit the wetter workshops um you know they're all doctor who fans and they're with nail fans and anyway and we were shown around you know this is when they were making lord of the rings um and they made me as a, as a gift as i left they gave me a sonic screwdriver that one and David designed, um, and that takes pride of place in my house. That's one of the most beautiful things. I've ever wow. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, anybody that knows anything about film will know the Weta workshops. So that is a phenomenal uh, gift to receive. So yeah, it was um, a great. Again, you have to sign a thing. You can't talk about it. You have to really talk about it. Uh, the things you see, you know, you have to sign a disclaimer when you begin. Um, but they were so generous. Like I said, they gave me this beautiful. Uh, anyway, and I've got that. Fantastic. So it, it, ain't, it ain't leaving the shelf. <laughs> We're coming looking for the perfume Ponce house. That's what it is. <laughs> um, Daphne, did, did you keep any mementos or do you get gifts given? I, I, I did get a gift at the end of the shoot. Um, they gave me a, a really cool little set of binoculars. And I still have those, and I love them. And um, no, but I didn't get anything from the show. So, but <clears throat> I always feel like it's really, uh, I didn't buy it. If they offer it <laughs> at the end of a show, then yeah. And sometimes you can buy things for half off or whatever from shows, um, but not not on that show. And like Paul said, we were probably, I mean, at that point we were hoping to shoot more. So you gotta keep everything together, but nobody knows what happened to the dress. Nobody can find it. That's disappeared. And this is where we find out what Yuji took from the set. <laughs> yeah. Um, you got the ball gown. Yeah, yeah no, you got the ball well, gown. So Admit it. Ch Chang Lee's. <laughs> yes, I have. I still have the ball gown, actually. I just you took it off right before gown. the meeting. I, I literally just took it off because I didn't want to get caught in it, right? Like, but I wear it every day. Um, <laughs> um, uh, no, but the uh, so Chang Lee's uh, jacket that had the orange stripe down the arm. It was made by this company called Destroy. It was quite a trendy thing back in, back in the days. And so after the show, I had procured it somehow. I can't remember if I bought it off them or if they gave it to me or maybe I stole it. I can't even remember at this point. But I would just wear the thing around to like nightclubs and things and whatever I was doing when I was younger, uh, just casually, you know, just chucking them, like just, just treated it like some whatever jacket I was wearing to like parties and stuff like that. And it wasn't until decades later, decades later, when it, it finally occurred to me, Andrew Beach was showing um, Paul's uh, costume that he had just acquired. 
at a convention and I was like, wait a minute, that jacket, like that, that's got to be preserved or something like that. Like, somebody cares about that. Like, look, this guy, Andrew, I, I mentioned it to Andrew and he's like, well, yeah, I mean, I would, I would love to have that. And so I, I donated to, to him to keep with all the other costume stuff. And so now it is, I believe in its rightful place, but for the longest time, it was just a, a piece of party clothing in my closet. <laughs> Next to the bowl gown. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. In fact, I'd wear them at the same time. I love that story. That's a great story, man. Because because it's it's had two proper lives now. It's had the life that you wanted it to have, and now yeah. it's having its you know, yeah, it's it's museum life. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I like. I think that's lovely. Um, there's a, a science fiction and film uh, um, museum just about to open in the UK, and um, they've got some amazing pieces, um, including. I think they recently acquired the Green Cross Code Man because Dave Prowse, obviously, who played Darth Vader, no. was the Green Cross yeah. Code Man. So, um, yes, yeah, some lovely things. And I think it's nice that things go on display and, and can be appreciated by the fans um, other than, you know, just at the back of the wardrobe. <laughs> it's weird what people take off set, though. Warwick Davis has three toes from an Ewok. <laughs> oh, where is that? Just imagine that in your bedside drawer. Three Ewok toes. <laughs> right, back to questions. Uh, Daphne and Yiji, we've got Fran on Facebook would like to know, I was lucky enough to meet you at the Capitol Convention in 2016. Once it is safe to do so, do you think you'll come back to the UK again? It's never going to be safe. Now, um, I'm, I'm dying to travel. I really miss... I, I miss the UK. I miss everybody. I miss everything. I mean, I basically, I don't know about you all, but um, I've been so isolated. I, I had just moved into this house when the pandemic was uh, arriving on our shores. And, um, uh, and so even the renovations I was going to do to the house, everything stopped. And I've just sort of been huddled up here outside of making an occasional <clears throat> trip to the grocery store. I've done very little. I did do, uh, I did shoot a, um, a, like a ghost story that my daughter was involved in. She was in it and uh, was producing and, and she wanted me to play a part in that. So I actually did spend a couple days in the Adirondacks, if that's how you say that. It's really far up north uh, in New York. Beautiful. And so we shot a little film up there, but outside of that and i spent most of the time alone in my car because i didn't want to take the chance of, of infecting anybody even though uh, i think it was fairly minimal that that i had uh covid but it was scary i have been vaccinated twice so and things are starting to calm down a bit here but who the hell knows what's going to happen but i would love to be able to travel again i really miss it that's yeah. long-winded yeah, I think we're all missing people big time. Um, I'm on vaccine one, so I'm waiting for vaccine two. So fingers crossed we'll all be able to get back to safely being around people. Um, uh, how about you, EG? Will you come back to the UK? Do you fancy coming and seeing the mad British fans again? Yeah, we'll do. We'll do at some point for sure. I, I took my daughter last time and we went up to Wales for a, a thing up there too, like stayed outside at the uh, stayed at the campsite, the Havana Mora or whatever. And there was an event going on up there and we kind of traveled the Welsh countryside. It was brilliant. Went to the Harry Potter thing. And uh, and I owe my son the same experience. We just haven't had a chance to do it um, since he was old enough. It's been it's been sort of, you know, this. So. Um, so, yeah, I'd love to do it again. Yeah. Next time you'll have to go and, and visit the northern towns because they're full of fabulous people. Go and go and visit the the, the northern people. <laughs> We've been up there. We've been up there for different gigs, haven't we, EG? We've gone up there. Yeah, yeah, I think, well, to, to some degree, yeah. Yeah, there's going to be a new TV series. It's about the northern doctors. So we're looking forward to that one. Um, right, Paul, I've got a strange question for you from Cameron on Facebook. Uh, we, it's very lengthy. I do apologise. It says, how would you say you have influenced the roles, say you have influenced the role as the eighth doctor? Since the character has evolved so much in audio and become more layered being, whereas in the novels, eight mostly kept the childlike wonder of recently regenerated doctor. 
Uh, and then he's added a PS, which I have to read out. PS, your work has definitely helped me through some tough times these past two years. And I thank you, great, thank you greatly for your amazing performances that you have crafted. Um, so I hope that makes you feel happy. Oh. I'm going to cry. Aww. Yeah, what a lovely thing to say. Well, you're very welcome. So, so do you think uh, you've influenced the way that the Doctor has evolved? Because obviously the novels, it's very different character to the audio. He definitely has evolved. Um, what I like to, the way I like to think about it is that when, about 20 odd years ago, when we did the, the movie, and I met with Phil Siegel and we talked about Mike doing it and we talked over ideas about the character and um, what might happen, you know, in, in, if, if it ensued, if, if, if it went to series. Um, and like most actors, I mean, all actors really. Uh, I would say to him, well, can he be a little bit darker? Can I have something a little bit more edgy or whatever it is? Um, and he said, okay, you know, let's get the pilot out of the way and we'll come up with we'll this sort of edgy thing. I thought the doctor was, you know, one thing, you know, he had, he had a sort of dark side, not a vampire, not, not, not cliched like that. But anyway, the, to cut a long story short, the way I like to think about it is that the in the years since and working on the big finish quite a lot of those ideas have been fed in i'm not, not nothing to do with me that's in answer to your question i've i've hardly i feel like i've hardly influenced it at all but the writers uh through big finish somehow have twigged um you know for because that's their job uh, and they they themselves have developed and move this character on and taking this character, the eighth anyway, into, you know, into strange places, darker places, the wars, of course, the time war, it probably is the big standout. So, you know, so things, and, I, and I've got older and it's got older. So um, I can say quite a, quite a, just neatly, quite a lot of those things that I was asking Phil Siegel, at least to entertain the idea of and try and include in, um, you know, in, in series, it, should they happen, have happened. They've happened on Big Finish. Uh, Mel on Facebook would like to know, what is your most memorable moment when filming? Daphne, do you want to pick that EG, one up? Do I want to? Uh, uh, EG, go first, EG. EG. <laughs> we think. Uh, memorable moment. Okay, well, there were there were there were lots for sure, but this one was like physically the most the most memorable. Um, it was we were filming the, the the scene at the end with the, the fireworks, and we were at that location with the pond, and the, there there was there was this water feature that was you know like a like a pool with these little concrete pads, and we would walk across it. And I was standing on one of those pads, and they were going to shoot from across the water, and it was some, you know it was part of the ending scene there, and they were lining up and. And so I was standing there kind of getting ready and we were just about to roll. And I suddenly I felt this this sort of like force on my on my insides, like something something pulling me, you know, like you're going into a time vortex or something. And uh, before I knew it, I was wet and horizontal. Um, and that that was met with varying degrees of, um, of 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 hilarity and also I think crying because the poor wardrobe department had to dry this thing. We didn't have multiples of this costume, so they had to they had to somehow get me back in shape, um, you know, in a very short amount of time. So I I I, I doubt I'll ever forget that. Thank you very much. The poor costume department, they always suffer the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> and it was raining that day too, so our hair was the thing. It was yeah. a thing, but that was one of my favorite moments when you fell in. That that was that was hilarious. But, um, <laughs> that might have been the most memorable guffaw moment that I can think of. Was when you went back right off into the water. So funny. <laughs> I'm sorry, yeah. but it was it was really funny. Outside of that, on camera. Uh, the, when I was evil and I had the dark uh, contacts and I had to yeah. smack Paul around, that was that was pretty memorable. <laughs> um, and those contacts hurt, so it was kind of an out of body kind of moment for me. But anyway, yeah, that that was one of them. Anyway, can you go next, Paul? 
No, so we did ask if the contact lenses hurt. Um, so uh, thank you for that. That's answered a question for somebody. How about you, Paul? What was your most memorable moment? Can I can I have a couple of days rather than a moment? <laughs> and, it, and, it, and it was the first two, maybe three days. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dak, but didn't we start in that house with the big, with the tall windows? Um, we did. Those, that, that's what we started with. The first few days of shooting with, were there. Um, and any nerves that I had, and I had plenty, um, suddenly was kind of just dispelled Cause, because of you, really. Um, just the atmosphere was just joyous uh, and we were in, you know, you didn't really know what it was. I didn't know who I was and somehow it kind of, it just made it and we just, yeah, that's, that's what I remember most. I remember being, suddenly being happy uh, after just being a bit shit scared, to be perfectly frank. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. was, I, I felt the same way about those first three days of shooting there. It was a perfect way to start really because and we it also was, it was. yeah we got to rehearse there we got to spend some time mm -hmm. with people that own the place they still own it and still live there as far as i know but um went no. back years later and saw the same people still there they let us come in it was crazy but uh uh yeah they were sweet and um the, yeah that was really absolutely the perfect way to start i i I'd never thought of it like that but it really did sort of even things out we got to know each other we figured out that we were okay together, you know, because it but, could have been but, but really almost, bad. Can you imagine? Yeah, but, all, each other? but almost, almost at the same speed, almost at the same speed that the characters were, were doing it. Right. Because they, you know, it, and so, so it's just, it, that's why I enjoyed it so much, I think. It all just seemed to, it fit like those shoes. It did. <laughs> it, did. It, it, it did. It was, it was it actually, fit, huh? it, yeah, that was really fun. And it was very pretty too. Uh, visually, that part of the movie, I've always liked the visual of that part. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. why. It was like early CGI, yeah, wasn't it? But that, that, like, uh, did I come through the window or window. put my hand through the glass or something? Yeah, and I'm yelling at you through the mail chute. Yeah, that yeah, was fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks to you. So I thought you were going to say your favourite part was the clockwork orange eye things because they looked dreadful. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, yeah, those were the, you. That was miserable. I felt bad for you. Nothing yeah. to see here. M everybody, move on. Everybody thinks it's glamorous. Uh, right, we've got time for one last question. So uh, the big question: Do you have any projects that you're working on that you can tell us about? And is there anything we can look forward to? Uh, so Yiji, do you want to go first on that one? Oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I was just recently on a show uh, called Snowpiercer, which was pretty interesting. It's based on the, um, the, the, the movie and the, the graphic novel, the French graphic, graphic novel um, of the same title. Uh, so, so that was pretty neat. I uh, can't really say anything about whether or not I'll be coming, coming back on, uh, into the next season or not, but there's a couple of seasons of it out on, on, uh, on Netflix, I think. So, so, so that was pretty cool. Um, but that was sort of, I, we shot all of that pre, pre pandemic. And, and since then I've kind of taken a, a hiatus from pretty much anything that I can't do from, from home. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's pretty much all for, for me. Yeah. 1001 cars long with Snowpiercer on Netflix. Brilliant show. We have seen you in it. <laughs> yeah. We're waiting to see what happens next. I think we've got to the end of season two, isn't it? That's there at the moment. So fingers crossed. We'll see you again and we'll find out what happens to the various uh, parts of the train. Um, <laughs> how about you, Daphne? Anything we should be looking forward to? You've been working on any projects? Um, I have not, um, other than that little ghost film or horror film, whatever you want to call it, that I, I shot. And it is untitled at the moment, so I can't even tell you what it is. But um, outside of that, and you know what's crazy is my daughter is on a show right now, and she's shooting like crazy right now. She is a regular on a show, but I'm not allowed to tell you what it is because they, there's some kind of, you know, whatever. I don't know. Um, so look out for Peyton Ashbrook. She's coming to you 
you to your television soon. She she's uh she's working hard. So I'm excited about that. But I can't tell you what it is. Sorry. The next generation is coming into film. Brilliant. He's doing great. Yeah. Awesome. That is so good to hear. Um and how about you, Paul? Anything that you've been working on, any projects or anything we should look forward to? Yes, well, yes, well I I'm I'm working with Nicola Walker. Yes. You <laughs> are already? again? Yeah. Um, I love her. Nicola, in this thing, Annika Nicola plays this uh, marine. She plays a policewoman, uh, a detective who, who investigates marine murders. I know, in um, in Scotland, and I play uh, a psychotherapist. <laughs> <laughs> believe that you believe that. But, um, can you imagine? And um, we sort of take a shine to each other. Anyway, that's all. I, that's all I can tell you without getting killed. But um, would you believe in a couple of weeks' time, I start a theatre job, and I'm really excited about it. It's three or four years since I did any theatre, and I love doing theatre. And the, the whole it's in, you know since the pandemic's been on, one of the things that I mean we've all all the actors have missed working, but the, the thing the thing that I find I miss most most of us are probably the same is being in rehearsal rooms, it's a sociable thing. It's being in a room with a bunch of actors working on a show. Um, so I'm gonna to go to London in a couple of weeks and work on some plays, incidentally, by Carol Churchill. So by some beautiful circular justice. She's the same playwright that wrote that play that I played a six-year-old girl in 40 years ago. Oh my God. Woo! It's the universe, <laughs> folks. Yeah, it that was is crazy. I got to I'm, like, you know what? I'm gonna have to thank her on after all these. I'm gonna have to thank her for my for my, for my greatest triumph. I got my 25. Nicola, yeah. Nicola Walker. I um one of my favorite things to watch um was that series Scott and Bailey. Yeah. Um, and Nicola played this incredibly damaged character in that, and she was on several different episodes and uh, that was one of the most um um emotional uh, performances i'd ever seen she is so good i am a huge fan of hers so yay i'm glad you're working with her i'll have to watch whatever that mystery show is can't wait and it must be said while you were saying you were playing a psychotherapist i wish i'd had reaction cam on <laughs> On me? <laughs> Both of you. Like, really? <laughs> oh, yeah. You are a great you know. actor. <laughs> you know? No, I can what face are you going to fall now? Okay. <laughs> Who knows? Honest to God, man. Well, anyway. that that's it. That's the end of our questions. That's the end of the hour. You have been absolutely fantastic. I'm so sorry for any technical problems. Uh, we're joined from the US and, and Bristol and in, in a, a study in Vancouver. Leicester. Yeah, oh, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. I do apologise. So um, uh, thank you so much for joining us. It's been absolutely brilliant to talk to you. And I'm sure that the fans thank will you. sincerely appreciate your time. So thank you. Thank I hope you. you enjoyed it. It's been great. Thank it's been you. great I to see you guys again. I miss you guys so much. Yeah, totally. Same see here. you soon. Thanks, Thank you. Man. Cheers. Thank you so much to our guests. They've been absolutely fantastic. We hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget that if you would like to book a guest one-to-one -one with uh, any of our guests or to purchase a personalised autograph, please do check out the URLs at the bottom of the page. We'll put them in the link at the end uh, and that's your way to support them for their fantastic time they've given. Hope you have a fantastic uh, festival. Enjoy the rest of uh, everything that's available and we look forward to welcoming you back to the National Space Centre very soon. Thank you very much. <laughs>